Hi everyone, wanted to let you know that I've written an article recently. It's about marketing content creation and distribution. Uh, so if you're in a position to make marketing decisions at your firm, you might find this uh, interesting. Now I've been thinking about uh, a problem and the problem is on the one hand, opportunity to create uh, marketing content is infinite and there's quite a, a handful of uh, marketing distribution channels to disseminate this content. Uh, on the other hand, our resources or resources of um, a typical professional services firm are very limited. So time, money, uh, human resource um, aren't in abundance. When we come to a question like what sort of content we need to create, the answer is obvious, like, well, the best content. And what is the best kind of content? Usually for us, it means that it's the kind of content that produces the most results for us or generates most value for us while simultaneously being um, less resource intense. And then I thought about, well, is professional services firm different from uh, other types of businesses? And the short answer seems to be yes. So let me give you an example. For instance, if let's say you're a manufacturer of uh, laundry detergents and you decide to create a piece of content um, uh, and uh, distribute it through, well, an online ad, let's say. So what do you do? You create that uh, messaging and then let's say a landing page and then you put out an ad um, saying like, okay, we have a 30% off. Well, what happens is that there is a high chance or a high probability that uh, this piece of content distributed through that channel will result in a sale. With professional services firms, it isn't the case. So buyers of professional services firms engage with different uh, types of content uh, on uh, different channels before they even uh, approach a professional service provider. All right, so it seems that we need to create different kinds of content and distribute it through different channels, but we have limited resources. So what do we do? We need a sort of a map to help us navigate uh, this terrain. So something that would help us figure out um, what we should be focusing on. At this moment, I started thinking about the nature of the content itself and the relationship of people who engage with the content. Um, and I asked myself a question like, what does a perfect content look like? It seems to me that the perfect content is the kind of content that um, pays for itself, delivers value to uh, potential buyers, and makes people who create it and distribute it excited about having more of this sort of content. If that's the case, we can identify uh, three types of relationships in regard to the marketing content. Stakeholders relationship, uh, clients relationship, profit relationship. And in order for us to make the most of the content channels that we're planning to use, uh, we need to have a map or rather three maps to help us navigate these terrains. To know more about this, consider reading the article and leave me a comment or note your thoughts. Thanks. And happy reading. All right, hopefully you've read the article. If you did, uh, it's gonna be a little bit easier from here. The, the question that you're gonna uh, probably wanna ask is, all right, how do we use these maps? And I will try and give you an example here. So let's say uh, we've decided to conduct a seminar. Let's take the first map, the stakeholders map. Now, if we look at it and think about a seminar, there are multiple ways how we can approach this. So the first and obvious choice is, well, let's say we wanna conduct a seminar at our own premises or at our own office. The other option could be, all right, let's uh, pay for being allowed to conduct a seminar at, a, at an industry uh, conference, for instance. Another option for a seminar might be that the value that we bring to the table 
to, let's say, the target audience that is complementary to another service provider, let's say um, a law firm that serves construction companies, and let's say we are an architect firm. So whenever the law firm is conducting a seminar, they might uh, want to invite us to talk about a specific issue related to the, the construction company's challenges. So this is a type of a seminar that's earned. So the law firm um, know that we can bring more value to the table if we participate in their own conducted uh, seminar. So they invite us. So when we're thinking about a seminar and we're using the map, we look at, we ask ourselves a question. All right, so owned seminar, what does it mean? What are the benefits? What are pros, what are cons? Um, if we do that, why we should do that, what are we going to get in return, how we're going to approach this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then we look at, let's say, a uh, shared seminar. What does it mean? Is it possible? Can we do this? Do we want this, etc.? If it's a paid uh, kind of seminar, all right, do we have resources? Can we do that? Do this? What are the benefits? What are the uh, disadvantages, etc.? And the same with earned, right? So what do we have to do to be uh, invited um, to participate in a seminar. So each and every type of seminar, in our case, um, would have its pros and, and cons, right? That's how you approach the first map. Now, if you uh, then take the, the second map, which is the client's map, and you think about a seminar, uh, you think in terms of, all right, do we want to uh, have a deep seminar or we, do we want to have a shallow seminar? And, and this means like the content of the of the seminar. What, what sort of content do we want to produce for the target audience that is going to attend? And it isn't necessarily good uh, to have a deep dive into whatever topic you have. Sometimes uh, the audience needs a more, uh, a, let's say, a shallower um, approach because they're a different, they're they're at a different stage of a buying process. All right. Um, the same goes with um, generic or personal. So, in many cases, there won't be an opportunity to create a deep personal uh, connection with people when you're when you're um, conducting a seminar. So. When you're making a seminar um, at your own premises, and if you're inviting, let's say, just one big firm, one big client, then maybe there are, there are opportunities for deep personal relationship establishment. But in in, in other cases, when you're just given a, a shared platform, for instance, where you conduct a seminar, uh, the probability that you're going to be able to create deep personal relationship is is lower. All right, so. And it's not necessarily good or bad. It's just how it is. And the way you approach uh, this problem, this challenge allows you to uh, consider what sort of um, seminars we want to create. So it's, it's not just necessarily one kind of seminar that you want to run. You want to have uh, different sorts of seminars with th th that deliver uh, different experiences uh, in order to get uh, to get it right. All right, now you now you take the third map, which is the profits map, and you try to place your seminar or seminars uh, on this map. So you go from free to fee, from scalable to exclusive. So none of these axes represent good or bad. So if you create the kind of seminar that is very scalable, so let's say you do it once and then you don't have to put any more resources into the content itself you're just gonna repeat it uh, let's say quarterly for instance uh, or maybe more frequently without major changes then it's a scalable sort of thing and maybe you can uh, you know shoot the seminar and maybe you can um, just post it somewhere to um, get contact details of the target audience etc so it couldn't be a scalable thing. On the other hand, another type of seminar you might you might want to be you might want to create it um, 
so deep, so personal, and so valuable to people. And you update it every uh, once in a while, let's say every um, every year with um, industry insight, that this sort of seminar becomes very exclusive. And then you consider, all right, so who should attend this? It, it, it might be a different kind of audience that would uh, be attracted to this sort of a seminar. And then on the um, uh, horizontal axis, you get uh, free to fee. And so you might want to decide, all right, uh, some of our seminars should be free, but some of, one seminar, maybe two seminars or whatever amount you want uh, could be for a fee because it's very deep, it's very personal, there's a lot of insight and it we have a lot of preparation um, that goes into creating this seminar. And it's so valuable that we believe that um, there will be an audience uh, who is ready to pay for uh, attending the seminar. So having all of these three maps combined allow you to, well, have a sort of a holistic approach to um, your marketing content channel distribution. All right, hopefully it's helpful. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments or send me an email. Um, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.